this is completely off the cuff with zero, literally zero research. But I mean, I think storytelling as an art form has, has went away. Welcome to Music Musing. Every once in a while, my brother George and I would have these conversations about music. Music is our passion, and it's a huge part of our lives, and we decided to share those conversations with you. So if you love music, sit back and enjoy this podcast. Welcome back to Music Music. Got my brother on the line. How we doing? Uh, weird. Yeah. I'm in quarantine. Oh, wait a minute. Everybody else is too. Yeah. In, in Florida, um, we call that house arrest, but you know. So. Oh, I think everybody calls it house arrest at this point. <laughs> we go by, I'm, I am, I am Florida man. So. Oh, okay. Or one um, of them anyway. So we're, we're testing something out, but we're actually going to throw a quick podcast together. And um, it's something we talked about before. We've actually kind of kicked it around for a long time and it's always come up here and there and it's so there's music out there that tells a story and the obvious one we always go to, and we've even mentioned this song many a times on our podcast is um, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Correct. And yeah. And I've, you know, one of the podcasts I listened to the history cash um, did, did a whole episode on the story behind it with some actual footage of the audio and stuff. And, and they're actually from the area. So they were kind of around when it happened in the seventies and it's, it's, it's been something that I've always loved to listen to is music that actually tells a story. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a true story. Like give me three steps is it might be a true story, but <laughs> well, probably more than likely. Yeah. I, but it, that's or music like that. Name? Most of Leonard Skinner's songs. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Let's just like all of Leonard. Um, hold on. Freebird. No. Well, simple uh, man. Sweet. I mean, yeah, oh, no, that's a good one. That's actually you got. You might have a point there. I didn't even thought about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there are are a lot of artists that tell stories more than more often than not. I hate the term storyteller. Um, I think VH1 did like a series of that where they where the yeah. artists some of the artists did some of their songs and told the stories behind them, which is not the same thing, but. Um, it's, it is one of the well, deals. I, I think that that might be a off an offshoot of that as well. Like maybe, maybe that could almost be a separate podcast where they took, you know, where there was one, uh, one of those Led Zeppelin songs where they talked about that, that something, no, no, it was, um, 25 and or six to four. Um, oh yeah, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, where they were talking about they were doing the recording of of another couple songs, and somebody asked what time it was, and they said, "Well, right. it was either and they were so or stoned, uh, it was twenty five <laughs> or six to four. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah." I, but I mean, that's that that's kind of different. I, I was looking more at the actual story, uh, right? You know, songs that are actual stories, but right. I think that's what but, this is. That's what this podcast was more more about. Uh, so what is that? What what is that? What what one stand out to you? I mean, other than Rick of Edmund Fitzgerald, because we kind of grew up with that one. <laughs> um, I think um, we mentioned it on the last podcast with Birkenfield, uh, Tom Petty's um, uh, yeah. running down. No, was it run down dream or learn? No, 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 no. I was. Um, uh, yeah. With the, Johnny Depp in the video. Anyway, I think there's, there's a number of songs. I always think of, it doesn't have to be like deep or intricate or melancholy or whatever. I mean, I think three like, steps isn't very deep. <laughs> well, right. I mean, or even um, werewolves of London by Warren Zevon, you know, I think it's, it's this comical, you know, tells this quick little story, you know, of a fictitious character that, you know, that terrorizes London. And I think it's, I think any story or any song can tell a story. And um, for a lot, I mean, uh, we, we go over this, you know, time and time again with me, you know, Boston's more than a feeling tells a story. I mean, you know, there's a lot of their rock and roll band um, smoking. I mean, it's a little bit shallow too, but I mean, um, I think Boston, I think a lot of seventies, late seventies, early eighties bands, um, corporate rock, especially told stories. 
um, bad company, you know, ready for love and, um, shooting star and things of that. Oh, shooting star is a good one. Oh, that's a really good one. I hadn't thought about that one. Right. I think there's a lot of that. I think there was a lot more of that in that genre than there is now. Now it's, you know, you know, you get into, you know, metal and, and harder songs. I mean, um, a lot of songs, um, nine inch nails hurt obviously tells a very, very poignant song about his drug use and so on and so forth. And, um, a lot of people, I mean, this is kind of in my, more in my wheelhouse because most people, when they actually hear the lyrics or understand the lyrics, yeah, it really throws them into it, it throws a song into a different, uh, much like we talked last time, um, when the video, even changing the video can change the meaning of the song. We yeah. And you're right. The, we, you've talked about that before that, you know, with me being a guitar player, I do kind of focus more on the the sound and the the rhythm and the sure. music and the the music and you definitely focus on the the vocals a lot more than I do. True. Well, the vocals um, as much as or well not not as much or less than probably should say than the the actual lyrics. Um, Shine down is is has as as of late really come on and written a lot of um, songs. But I mean, even like Rage Against the Machine, there's a lot of poignant politically charged songs uh system of a down is big for that you know you too even uh you know in the 80s politically charged new year's day i mean was um uh the what is it one uh, where you know he talks about martin luther king being assassinated and, yeah and, i mean there's a lot of songs a lot of bands that tell stories that if you listen to them i mean it, it may or may not affect you it might not be something you care about but there's a lot going on if you listen to the yeah. actual lyrics I think that that's, I mean, that's a little bit off the track I was looking for. Like for me, I'm, I, when I think of songs that tell a story, I kind of feel like, so here's another good one that, that I've, I've, I'm not a huge, well, I'm, I used to be a huge fan of the band, but Detroit Rock City is kind of a fun start to finish story. Sure. Like, you know, it starts the night out, get, you know, driving around down, you know, through the, through the roads and not paying attention and, and, you know, obviously we talked about, uh, Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, but I, I, I like, what's the, um, uh, Miss American Pie where it kind of starts from the beginning. Oh, and Don McLean. Don McLean. Tells another the story, story of, of, yeah, the big bopper and Richie Valens getting killed. I mean. And, and I, I don't know if it has to be a famous story, but famous stories tend to make the better, you know. Well, I think more and, memorable ones anyway. I mean, true. People remember them if it's about something that a lot of people remember, obviously. I mean, it's kind of uh, a, a straight black line. It's easy to draw a conclusion that people, under, if people have heard the story, that they kind of dig the song. or like, oh, that song's about that? Cool. You know, I think that does help. I mean, Yeah, whereas, but I think, but, no, I think you mentioned it, though. It, it's kind of a dying thing. I don't think too many bands today you know, go out of their way to write yeah, even a short story or a story about something famous or, or they've, you know, I did see something the other day where somebody wrote lockdown that was in reference to the quarantine. Yeah. Who was it? So it was, it was one of the metal bands that actually wrote a song about it. Um, well, shine down wrote a song and did something where they were, when they raised a bunch of money for it too, about the, about the shut or about the lockdown and stuff. So, Again, there are still bands out there that have that, but I think most most bands nowadays are um, are are more their their stories are more or more uh, are more personal. Like wh- whoever's writing the song, the 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 singer songwriter or the the guitar player or whatever. I mean, if it's you know if whatever if Nikki Six or or Ozzy Osbourne, you know, if they're writing about. Uh, addiction or, or even, you know, uh, Trent Reznor, there's, I think there's more of a level of that than actual telling of telling stories of, of things that happened or have happened in history. Um, right. So to, so to speak, i.e. wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, you know, the big bopper dying, you know, things of that nature. I think there's, I think there's less, um, aptitude for people to try to make money off tragedy writing a song about tragedy um in this day and age because people are so uh, 
what's the well, way? I think, but if you think about it, there aren't really songs written about happy moments. Like there wasn't one about, you know, the moon landing or I don't know, you know, pick what uh, something good that happened. And, you know, the, you, there's nothing True. written about the happy stuff. So, well, I'm sure there are, I'm sure maybe ones, maybe not ones that we know about or would reference, I guess, but True. I think there's definitely a level of, um, it has to be, it has to be poignant, but I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of examples, but then it gets into that. I think it rock and roll gets into that usual muddy area where is it, you know, is it a story that's pointing to you because, you know, the lyrics or the, or the story told in, you know, the throes of rejection by Pantera mean a lot more to me than I'm sure they do you, you know, and well, <laughs> Yeah, and I, that kind of also dips into something that we've also talked about in the past too, about you know how, how much the words mean to you. And again, it's not just you personally, but how much the right. words mean to people. And obviously, those are going to mean different to different people. But I, I think you're right. I think as as time has moved on to rock and metal and death metal and grunge metal and everything that's in between and then moved into really a pop. And I'm sure there's probably a lot of good stuff in, in hip hop and rap that might tell a story from beginning to end, but you know, it's not our genre. You're right. Right. Um, like for me, um, if you listen to faceless man by um, Creed, it's kind of a journey through, um, through life and bringing himself out of something that he was in before. And, you know, that's a personal song to me and I hear the story in it only because I've listened to it enough times to hear the story in it. So right. maybe I'm just not listening. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't, I wouldn't go that far. I think it's, I mean, again, I think the story, I mean, we, we kind of, this is completely off the cuff with zero, literally zero research, but I mean, I think storytelling as an art form has, has went away. Um, because it's yeah. people, people's attention spans are less than three minutes now or, or whatever, you know, however long a, a yeah. traditional rock song is. I think people are, you can draw people in, but I mean, how long is the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald? Seven minutes? Uh, that's a good question. I'll look it up, but it's, yeah, it's an exceedingly long song and it's, three, four, five verses of, you know, it starts from when it left, it starts to when it crashed and it starts to when they're ringing the bell for all the dead guys. I mean, it is, it's an intent, it's a labor intensive thing. And I, I don't think the talent level of today's artists are, I, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't think they want, I mean, it's almost career suicide because people can't pay attention that long. And I, I, I really right. believe that six minutes and 29 seconds. I knew it was pretty, <laughs> pretty healthy. It's yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, so we had famous ones. We had Gordon Lightfoot and he was pretty known for, you know, telling a good story. Right. Uh, Oh, Johnny cash boy named Sue. Oh, sure. There's a story. Yeah. Growing up with his dad, naming him Sue and getting beat right. up, and then finally finding him. Well, um, the Folsom Prison Blues, Ring of Fire. I mean, the guy had, I mean, they were all. Dylan? Yeah. I, I mean, the Dylan, the Doors. I mean, you can go into the Doors as far as like the poetry level of storytelling. Um, oh, well, is that really the... storytelling at that point? <laughs> Well, that's what I mean. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, Dylan was Dylan. I mean, I mean, I know one of your, Simon favorite, and Garfunkel. One of Go your favorite, yes. One of your favorite bands, the Eagles. I mean, they had a lot oh, of, yeah. there. I mean, Hotel California is right there with, um, the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, as far as telling a story, a complete story. And it's a long song too. Good point. Yeah. Um, and they had a number of those too. I mean, you know, take it um, easy. Is that Take, a story? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, more than less. Um, not a complete. I mean, it's more of a. You know. I think it's more of a. You know, country rock song than a than a storytelling song. But they're. I think they're again. That still falls into that. 
you're naming bands and artists from late seventies, early eighties yeah. at best. I mean, um, like heart, you know, magic man ta- you know, she's, she's begging her mom, you know, look, he's, you know, this is the guy, uh-huh. wanna, you know, the same thing. It tells that story. There's oh, a little, Sylvia's mother. There you go. Dr. Hook. There you go. I mean, um, Rolling Stones. I mean, if you want to, like, sympathy for the devil tells a story. I mean, you know, oh, it does through through history and time. Well, that's right. Big. I mean, it's you know, take it or leave it. But I mean, there there are there. But again, same genre. I mean, the Who. Um, Pinball Tommy, Wizard. Yeah, I mean Tommy. The whole. I mean, Pink Floyd. Hello. I mean, they did whole albums that told stories and made movies. Oh yeah, about technically, it, so. that's technically the walls to start and a finish. Yeah, that I'd forgotten about that. So, but it's again still that genre, still late seventies, early eighties, where it. I think the artists were more, um, more into selling themselves, selling their brand. I don't want to say selling themselves, selling their brand, selling their story. than they were worried about how many people, how many likes they got, how many clicks they got, how many hearts they got, how many well, shares and, and if it went viral or not. But they also didn't have a huge concern for re- rep- repetition, you know, yeah. seven choruses in a song. Right. Or having everything match up and rhyme. When they told stories, they, they, that there was sometimes a chorus in it and sometimes there wasn't even a chorus. Right. Um, so yeah, that's a good point that they weren't looking to, to get themselves sold out there either. They, they, you know, they were writing because they write, wrote music f- to tell the story and, you know, but, and some of them had hits anyways that they were already working off of. So, it, you know, yes, as you, I, you beat me to it here, there, that was going to be a curveball. A lot of those, you know, story songs were already by established artists. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's a good point. It wasn't a, you know, uh, what do you call it? Wake up and let's, let's tell, let's write a six and a half minute song about a shipwreck and get famous by it. That was, I'm sure that wasn't how that worked. I mean, um, sundown for Gordon Lightfoot was way before that. Correct. Oh yeah. Yeah. Much. Uh, I don't know if it was way before, but I know it was well, before. I mean, so that's what I mean. There are uh, Eagles, same way, Leonard Skinner, Dylan. I mean, a lot of these bands and artists already had established careers where they could. Right. And they didn't have to worry about getting kicked off radio or somebody else taking their spot. Right. Like, like now. So I think there's a, there is a level of um, insecurity where bands or artists aren't willing to take that risk, even established ones nowadays to write a six and a half minute song about a shipwreck i mean i don't know keep beating that horse but no you know, i i mean. it's i think it's the quintessential i mean really if you if you if you look at you know what we're talking about in stories you know it, it's a famous event it's like it's kind of checking the check boxes it's a famous event that happened it's a famous song that's come out of it right it's a well-written song i mean it's a it's a an amazing song, both lyrically and singing and music and everything. Right. So it's going to be kind of the quintessential thing that you and I go to, obviously. Sure. Um, but it kind of, this always falls back to that thing we say at the beginning and end of every one, you know, pro- prove us wrong. What, what's your story one? What's the one you go to? What's the one that you like that, you know, made you think that of oh, a story and, and, or is about something that we just don't know about, you know? Right. No, exactly. And it's, to me, it's, I mean, um, I I don't know. I mean, I, I, as a writer, as a, as a guy that likes listening, you know, I like even, um, even bands like Pantera or Lamb of God, where it's, it is, I mean, admittedly hard to decipher sometimes if you, if you take the time to listen, there's a lot more going on there than you think. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and that's always been important to me. I mean, telling a story, if, if musically, if you, if you catch me 
and then I pay attention to the, to the lyrics and then, and then I'm really in, I mean, that's, that's been the kind of the biggest thing with, uh, a song like, uh, um, man, <laughs> more than a feeling by Boston, because it's musically, I was always in, I was into Boston, but then when I started listening to the lyrics and I realized how much it like pointed towards how it made me feel or how I felt once I associated my feelings with that song, what was being said in that song, that's when I started hooking on to bands like, you know, Anthrax and Pantera when I was an angry teenager. And now, you know, I listen to, you know, bands like the Black Keys and, and, and Gary Clark Jr. Because, um, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, that blues feeling when you want to slow down, you know, they're, and they're again, Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, like Texas flood or, you know, the sky is crying. I mean, they do tell stories, just not intricate stories of an actual event. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, and, and I, that, that is a huge difference, but it's, but it, to me, it's, it's a straight gray line, you know, I mean, it is telling a story, just not of actual events. Yeah. Or maybe it's actual events for the writer and you can just relate close enough where you, you know, you, man, I know what this guy's, I know what this guy's talking about. Whereas, okay. Yeah. There was an actual shipwreck in, you know, in Lake Superior, you know, and I know the guys died. So I know what they're, I know what he's talking about, even if you can't relate to it personally. So there's a difference. I think that's telling a story that you, that you've heard and you understand you can relate to or telling a story, a personal story that, man, I really can relate to that just in a different way because that's or, how it makes you feel. Not just because you've heard of it, you heard of a, you know, a shipwreck or a funny story like give me three steps, which exactly. may have actually happened. <laughs> exactly. You know, if you've ever been in a bar and mess with the wrong dude, I mean, <laughs> Oh, I know the, the best example I can tell or give you right now that I know you'll, you'll probably sit back in your chair is 74 jailbreak. Oh yeah. Oh, what a good song. Right. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Made, that's made, made it out with a bullet in his back. You know? Yeah. And no, that's, that's, that's exactly, I think a lot of their, God, I'm going to think back of some of their songs. I mean, it's sure. They all, they all tell a story to a certain extent. Um, yeah, I think I think the the ones that I focus on are more the actual start to finish type stories. Like, give me three steps. You, the the song starts out with him dancing with a girl, right, and then it progresses slowly to finding out that it's somebody else's girl, and then that guy threatening, and then that guy pulling the gun, and then you, you know what do you do after that situation? And you know, like you said, the wreck was the you know them getting ready to go, and then out on the water, and then all the way down to you know what they do every year, they ring the bell. Right. every year and um 29 yeah times. yeah yeah i know <laughs> thank you uh history cash podcast for bringing that up because i think i i i i always tend to miss that part in the song because you, you kind of get to the middle of that 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 last part that last couple lines and it's just the gales of november and that's all i can remember it just gives me goosebumps and i'm kind of checked out at that point <laughs> but, yeah. but i mean uh, there, there's I, I think the difference in some of these is is the quality of writing, not necessarily yeah. the story being told, because there's been a hundred shipwrecks, thousands of shipwrecks yeah. all over this globe. Titanic. I mean, come on. <laughs> but Gordon Lightfoot's eloquent, I mean, you know, in the face of a hurricane west wind. I mean, when you yeah. you just heard that. I said it in plain English, but you heard it how he I said it. I, did. I heard it in his voice completely <laughs> with the inflection and, and so on and so forth. So I think that matters. And, and when somebody takes something to heart, whether it's, you know, again, a shipwreck or, you know, drug addiction, battling drug addiction, or, or just, you know, a guy pulling a gun on you for dancing with his woman, whatever it is, <laughs> there's, once you can associate with it or once you, once you realize the artists that make you part of that story, I think is, is the key. Yeah. I, I go with that. I, I, I'm fine with tying a bow on it right there. Cause that's, that's the point. I think uh, it storytellers are storytellers, but I think musicians that are good storytellers can make you feel that, that story. And 
musicians Absolutely. that aren't i can't so right because i believe but, uh, that guy whoever their acds was talking about got shot in the back breaking out of jail <laughs> i don't even know who he was but. i'm about to go put that song on when we get done too i heard that in forever <laughs> Well, brother, I just wanted to catch up real quick and try this little platform out. We're working with Zencaster and see if that works tonight. And then um, I want to yeah. have a quick conversation about something we've, we keep bringing up every once in a while. So sure. um, we'll pass that on and see how everybody likes it. Absolutely. Don't forget to okay. check us out on every social media site um, and send us hate mail at musicmusingfeedback at gmail.com quotes, comments, suggestions, and anything you want to talk about, let us know and we will get back to you. Yep. Well, I'll probably catch you in a little bit then, brother. Cool. Take it easy. Yep. Yep. See ya. See ya. We want to talk to you about music, so reach out to us at musicmusingfeedback at gmail.com. You can also find us on most social media sites by searching Music Musing or George or Craig Seibert, S-Y-B-E-R-T. And you can also find us on Twitter as Music Musing underscore as well. Thank you for listening to this Music Musing podcast.